I'm Ron Arad. I'm a Royal Academician. When they told me that I became an academician, I didn't know what did they select me as, an architect, an artist, uh, a ping pong player. But here I am. I'm doing things from very small things, jewelry, to very huge towers. For me, to design something is to do something that didn't exist before I designed it. And it has to be genuinely new, at least new to me. And it has to be exciting and interesting. The whole thing starts with curiosity. Uh, like what happens if you do this? What happens if you don't do it? And then uh, to follow your curiosity and hope that you're not the only person that's curious about what you do and that there's some other people around you, the people that, that see what you do, that are also curious and interested. Otherwise, it would be very sad. Uh, everything starts with what, what if you do that, if, what if you don't, what's and ifs. I don't like manifestos. Uh, when I taught at the Royal College of Art, I mean, we never use the word should. You should do this and things should be like that. And good design is good business and uh, function follows form, form, form. It doesn't matter if we go to uh, Oscar Wilde. He said there's two types of people. There's charming people and tedious people. And I look at art and objects and things in the same way. There's exciting and charming things delightful and boring and not interesting. What if we do a building that's upside down? What does it mean? It means that uh, it's, I'm referring to a building that we completed a year ago and it's amazingly fully occupied now. It's, it's a, an office building for high tech, the high tech community and uh, we put all the plant and machinery on the floor. Normally you put it on the roof. I wanted to clear the roof and I wanted to do a building with the smallest footprint possible. And rather than go into a building through a maze of a shopping mall and I want it to be on a park in a place that there wasn't a park before. I said in one presentation that it's not a cucumber, it's, it's, it's more like an iceberg, meaning that it's not an extruded building, but it, it starts small and it, then it goes wider. And then, uh, the, uh, the marketeers wanted to take me for the promotional film. They wanted to take me to Iceland to pretend to be inspired by icebergs. Uh, I refused, they took an actor, much better looking than me. When I saw the film, I was very jealous. I wish I went, amazing. But uh, I don't work like that. Yes, there's an iceberg there. Uh, you can see that, but uh, it was an afterthought to call it an iceberg. It wasn't, uh, that's one example. I mean, I can give you other examples like a bicycle. What if you do a bicycle without wheels? Uh, only suspension. And this is, by the way, a piece that I, I showed here, in one of the summer shows. The first, my, the first thing I showed at the Royal Academy before I was an academician was a ping pong table. Uh, and there, the what, what if it's not a straight thing? What if it has a belly? Ah, uh, oh, okay, it will. And what if it's reflective? It, uh, it slows the games the game down because even if you do a f the flattest uh, shot you have, it goes up a little bit because of the angle. I played against a British champion and he won 21-4. I'm so proud of the four points. Uh, anyway, he, he, we played a different game. He, he played to make it as easy as possible for me to, to smash. And anyway, when I had the ping pong table here in the next room, Sir Anthony Carroll uh, came in the morning of the, the opening 
and he said to me, this is a wonderful sculpture. And I said, thank you, Sir Anthony. And then he said, he comes close to me and he said, you should try to play ping pong on it. And that cheered me up so much that, that you know, that this Sir Anthony Carl looks at the ping pong table, but he sees a sculpture before he can see a piece of sport equipment. And then he has the idea that one could play ping pong on it. Anyway, that's a, that's a story that, I, that it's suitable for here because that's where it happened. And it also uh, sums up the question of what is art and what is design. It doesn't matter. I'm really, really happy with this work behind me for many reasons. Like I'm giving a talk now to an audience that I don't see. And the audience can't really see me. Uh, and it's done online. This piece, the first time I saw this piece was right here when it was hanging on the walls. Actually, it's not true. The first time I saw it real. Uh, it was done in it was done on screen, the piece. Um, I, we bought the car online. We wanted to, to buy like a, a classic Mercedes and we had lots of, we tindered lots of candidates. And then, oh, this red one, it was the, the, the only one that Mercedes did with a fin and things. And it was important that there's, you know, the Mercedes-ness of it. And so this one was chosen. So we bought it online in Holland. And then it went to a, the place where it was pressed. They used to be shipbuilders only, but uh, they started doing architectural work and, and things like that. I worked a lot with them. And from there it went to from Groningen, where this was, it went to Den Haag, to a workshop of a really, really amazing guy that is an expert on, on vintage cars. I did a show before called Cuba, working title with Cuban cars, and he helped us. But the first time we met him and we saw squashing the cars, he, he was crying. But he converted, and it, he is very passionate about this as he is about cars. Anyway, so took it to his workshop and then we worked on things uh, like sticking a mirror there, making the area, this, giving him the sizes of the frame, worked back and forth with lots of drawings and lots of photographs and, uh, and Zoom meetings. And I felt I knew the piece. Uh, very well, but it was something else coming here and seeing it for real, hanging on the wall for the first time. And also maybe uh, it's the time to say that that wasn't my plan for what I'm going to show at the summer show. Uh, my plan was to do another thing, another piece uh, to do with cars. I wanted to do uh, to put a car, a Morgan car, which is a Morgan is a, a very English car that is uh, crafted rather than produced with as a, a, a wooden skeleton and, and it's, it's, a, it's like Savile Row of cars. And then I wanted to cover it, to, to, to drape a cover with a sketch of what it's covering. So, you know, started uh, sketching it and, and simulate on the computer the draping of the fabric and all went very well. So happened that the first sketch that I did and I thought I'm going to go back to it and, and, and refine it was the best. And no attempt to do a bet better than the first sketch worked. So that, sketch was sent to weavers 
jacquard weaving, it's very important to note that the fabric, the, the textile industry is the first industry that used computerized uh, fabricating way before the car industry. You do some stuff in one country, in one place, you mail the sketches that are made like sketches. And then after a while you get back the reels, the big heavy reels of the cover of the, of the car. And when I received uh, the fabrics, we were all under lockdown. My favorite thing is when I see a piece of mine and my first thought is, it's much better than what I deserve. I, I, I feel the same about this. It's better than what I deserve. So I got a fabric that was amazing, amazing. But then there were restrictions on, because of the, of the coronavirus, restriction on floor space that we could use. I had to find another, another parking for the car, which is in Saville Row, around the corner. And I really liked it going to Saville Row because I used it in my head as a, a parallel, you know, the, the craftsmanship of the tailor and the, uh, and the craftsmanship of the people, of the car makers. When I had this amazing fabric at home, I had to build. I had to build something to look like a car, to drape it on, to see what it, what it would look like. And it took me about 20 minutes to take all the furniture I had around me and cushions and things and to, to build a car out of it and drape it. But the idea was that no one will know if there's a car underneath or not. It's, it's like shredding your sketch. Is it there? Is it not? When we moved to Savile Row, the, the, that project from here to Savile Row, um, I decided to make a sketch of the car to go under the blanket. And I thought no one is going to see it. Morgan were very kind to send me like bits of wings and, and, and parts of the car so I can do an assemblage of the car. And I did, I did a one-liner wheels and bumper and things under it to carry it. The problem was that I liked it so much not me, so I talked before about you're curious, but it's nice if other people are join you with your curiosity. So what are we going to do? I mean, I really love the new piece, better than what I deserve, and now I'm going to cover it. Normally when there's a new piece of work, a sculpture thing, there's the unveiling. Yesterday we did the veiling, which is the opposite. And, and you think, oh, let's not cover it, let's not, um, and then when we covered it, great, it's a new joy. We had this guy, a master stitcher called Dario, and we used, instead of one blanket, we used two blankets and we, we stitched it. So the stitches are uh, a very important part now. That's the connection between this. I couldn't use a lot of floor, so I used a lot of wall, <laughs> and I found parking very near here and the story got got better the thing i like about the story is that it's what i like normally like that you get in the evening something you didn't know existed in the morning no way i could have predicted what's going to happen to this project and uh, and it's very exciting for me at least but for everyone around me so in a funny way, I'm wearing a mask now, which is part of a collection that we did uh, to raise money for, for carers, for the national health. This idea comes exactly directly from the Morgan car, from covering something and drawing on the cover what it's covering. So it's not that my face is like Salvador, but it's, it's, it's drawing drawing uh, a face. So we did a collection with, shall I be Groucho Marx now? Or we can let Matisse do some work. Or 
Einstein, which maybe, maybe we can talk about another project. Uh, I did a book to celebrate uh, the 100th uh, anniversary of the theory of relativity. Uh, I was asked to do something for, by the Einstein Foundation to, to celebrate, and they wanted the bust of Einstein, and they wanted people like Obama the, the, to sign it, and I said, no, 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 let's do something better than that. I mean, Einstein wasn't a cow that people can sign. We did a book, and the book looks like uh, it's cut, it's carved to be the face, the portrait of, of Einstein. And every page is written by a world visionary, 3D printed in one piece. And the nice thing that you discover is that uh, when you start uh, going through it, gravity turns the pages. And it's all one piece. There was no binding, no connecting. The, it was born in one page. And because we enjoy the gravity so much, the fact that gravity turns the pages, we said, what if we printed this book in a space station where there's no gravity? And that's exactly what we did. We uh, printed the book in the International Space Station. And it's really nice to see the book floating without gravity in the space station. I hope that, I don't know why, that there'll be uh, the need, the people, uh, people will discover, the people that commission design, the advantages of doing things that are genuinely new and are not exactly a take on the trend of what is happening. And a good example for me was a glider I did for Morozo, which is, uh, I, I wasn't interested in doing a sofa that is the seat, the back, the arm, the arm, and you can play them and stretch them and curve them. And so I wanted to do a piece that is like one lump that's pulled in and you sit on it and then, and it's so big and heavy, but amazingly comfortable. And when you sit on it, there's another surprise. It, it hovers on the floor. It's, and I, I took a log of a cedar and uh, carved the seat in it and carved a place for the secret mechanism that makes it hover. And I had to write some, I felt like writing something it was modeled in the studio, and then a, a computerized woodpecker, like a five-axis milling machine, carved and did the letter. So I took William Morris's sentence, have nothing in your house that you don't know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. Going back to your, the first questions I dealt with, I don't like manifestos and I don't like shoes and I added all love. So in other words, do what you want. William Morris says, has to be useful or beautiful. And I said, oh, all love, if you like something, that's good enough. Technology is only a tool. I love working with artisans and I love working with technology, with machines. It's not one or the other. Things will change and things are changing. Uh, you discover how much you can do from your bedroom. How is it going to affect office spaces? Maybe people will miss it so much, you know, going and maybe it will something else, not what the, we predict exactly will happen. And also you're forced to, to think of how you can use your ability, your creativity, uh, to help when you can.